Hey guys, welcome back to our channel or welcome if you're new. I'm Melissa and today's vlog, well, I guess it's actually not going to be a vlog really at all. Um, I just wanted to sit down for a minute and give you guys an update about what's been going on the last couple weeks like with our family and uh, my pregnancy and just kind of like everything that's been going on. A lot of people have noticed and I started getting like comments on like Instagram and TikTok and like all of our other platforms and stuff. Um, just people kind of checking in like concerned because we didn't do Vlogmas this year. Um, if you guys follow our channel pretty closely, you know that we typically try to upload almost every day in December and we didn't even come close to that this year. Um, and yeah, like I had to cancel, uh, the rest of my gift guide series that I was going to put out on my personal channel, um, due to some pregnancy complications. Um, uh, but I didn't really explain what those complications were. So I wanted to kind of sit down and let you guys know exactly what's happened over the last several weeks. Um, and it, when I explain it, it'll make sense as to why we have an act. We didn't put out an update like prior to this, um, because I know some people were like, saying like, why, why haven't they talked about, um, like the twins and like her pregnancy and stuff in like almost a month. Um, but you guys will, it'll make sense after I, um, after I explain it. So the last update that we had given you guys was right after we got back from our snow trip, um, to Tahoe and I had a doctor's appointment and at that doctor's appointment, um, my OBGYN was very concerned because she was seeing, some stuff on an ultrasound, ultrasound in her office that she was not understanding what it was because their machine's like kind of old. Um, the one that they actually have like in the office, um, that the doctor uses, like just when people come in for their like fast appointments. So she sent me to see a radiologist at our local hospital. And that appointment was kind of like an emergency appointment. If you guys watch that vlog, um, I think we talked about like it was late at night, like they had me come in at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, um, to the main hospital for this ultrasound. And we knew, we knew from like the beginning, like when they told us that we were having twins, that there was a chance that one or both babies could not make it. Um, again, if you've been following, you kind of know, like I've talked about it, like they, and I've shown ultrasounds like, so basically like when I first went in, there were two sacks and you couldn't see like any babies, but like, that's really common. I was only like six weeks pregnant or something like that, even maybe even earlier than that. So it's really, um, hard to like see really anything at that point because they're not really developed yet. And then on future ultrasounds that I had, um, they could make out one baby, the baby that was closest to the front pretty easily, but they were seeing the sack and like, they were seeing something in it behind that. Um, but they weren't being, they weren't able to like see a heartbeat or anything on baby B. So we knew that that was something that could happen that, um, baby B wouldn't, wouldn't make it. And so when I went to the hospital and had that specialty ultrasound, um, the reason why my doctor sent me was because when she had told us that early on, she mentioned something called vanishing twin syndrome. And that's when you are pregnant with twins. And then usually before the end of the first trimester, one is like reabsorbed. I don't know. Like, I guess like that's how, how they explain it. And so then like, it doesn't look like, then it's just gone. Like there's nothing there. Um, but what my doctor saw was that there was something there and that the sack had grown, the baby sack had grown. Um, but they still couldn't see a heartbeat. So that's why she sent me to the, um, like the specialist to get like a specialist ultrasound. So I went to that appointment and I didn't really find out much because the radiologist isn't like the doctor. They're not allowed to really tell you anything. Um, they had to like do their report and then send it to my doctor to be reviewed after that. And then my doctor is the one that would talk to me about like the results. Um, so it was really anxious. It was really like, I was really anxious and it was like really nerve wracking cause we had to wait a couple days, um, to hear from my doctor and what we found out from that ultrasound is that baby B didn't make it basically that they're estimating that it stopped growing somewhere between eight and 11 ish weeks. Um, the reason why it was super concerning was because 
it was further along than like the vanishing twin syndrome thing like typically would happen and once the babies are more developed at that point like they're pretty big your body can't really like absorb like reabsorb that like it's past the point of it being like a vanishing twin like it's the, it, the tissue is there if that makes sense um, and all of this, like this whole experience has been like wild for us because we've never had like a high risk pregnancy. I've never had any pregnancy, like any real complications, um, any co delivery complications, like nothing. Like, so all of this, like dealing with all these specialists and everything has just been like really overwhelming, especially since I've had to do it by myself for the most part because of COVID Jeff hasn't been able to go to a lot with me. So that's made it like a lot more difficult. Um, so after that ultrasound that they had, it took a long time. It was like a really, it was like an hour long ultrasound. And the doctor, after she reviewed it, told me that baby B no longer had a heartbeat and, um, that it had, it was big enough that like to explain the vanishing twin thing, like that, that likely wasn't possible that my body would absorb it at that point. Um, and obviously to watch out for any sort of bleeding or cramping, um, because that could then put baby A at risk, um, of me miscarrying baby A, which is how they're saying is a healthy baby. Um, so that I've been taking it really easy, like not on like official bed rest. Like I'm not like in bed all day, but I've definitely not been doing any unnecessary activity. And I've just been watching for like any pain or bleeding or anything like that, which so far I have not had. So, um, like that's good news. Um, after the doctor told me that, they also said that the radiologist found that baby A, um, who they're saying is developing on track as of right now, um, but baby A has a cyst on its placenta. And that's a thing that I'd never really heard of before, like honestly ever. So um, I asked obviously like, what are the risks of that? What does that mean? Um, and you can Google it, like, if you, if you're interested in, like, reading a lot more about it. But basically, I was told that it occurs in about 5% of pregnancies, so it's not entirely uncommon. Um, but that when you have that happen, um, it puts your baby at a higher risk of having something called IUGR, which is, um, intrauterine growth restriction, I think. Um, to where the baby doesn't get enough nutrients potentially, and it's like small, um, could be lead to like preterm or like early delivery. Um, if, if there's like major problems with it. And I had heard of that before. I just didn't know that it was something like, I didn't know about the cyst thing, but I had heard of like IUGR. Like I know that that's a thing. Um, they also said that depending on if the cyst grows or, you know, whatever the status of that is, if it gets worse, that it puts me and the baby at risk for something called placental abruption, uh, which is where the placenta can detach quickly and ca it's cause bleeding. And obviously like the baby, um, a lot of times doesn't make it if that happens. Um, so it's like an emergent, an emergent thing. So it's, it's been, it's been a hard couple weeks because to find out that, uh, one of the babies, didn't make it is obviously like really hard and it it's hard to even like fully explain sorry I like don't I said I wasn't gonna like get upset so it's hard to even fully explain the feeling of having a miscarriage um of a, of a twin because while I'm obviously like very devastated and we're grieving over the loss of this baby, we're still living in this moment of I'm still pregnant with another baby. And now that baby might have something wrong with it. Um, so it's just been like a very, very difficult couple weeks. Um, we told our family and we told, uh, the girls that, so they know that, um, I'm, I, that it's only, only one baby right now. Um, but we haven't really talked to the kids that much about like the additional problems, like the additional things that like now is our concern. 
um, a couple days after I had that ultrasound, I had to have another ultrasound and this one was with a genetic counselor, specialist person, radiologist. I don't know like all the terms because like I said, I've never had like a high risk pregnancy before. So the reason I went to the genetic specialist ultrasound person was because they wanted to look at baby A and see if everything looked okay. Like if everything was like looking like it was on track. Um, they wanted more detailed pictures of the baby's placenta showing the cyst and like everything going on with it. They wanted to measure its neck for something, which I think had to do with like, I think it's like a test where they were checking to see if like the baby had a risk of having Down syndrome or something because, um, and I think I mentioned this in another video, but we were told that we could not have genetic testing because when you're pregnant with multiples, they just don't do like the test is called NIPTs. I think that's what it's called. NIPT test. Um, and that's what you would typically have done like early genetic testing. And they said that you just can't, if there's more than one baby because it skews the results or it could, um, you could have like false positives or false negatives or whatever. Like there could be a lot of problems. So my provider, um, doesn't do them. Uh, so they did this ultrasound as kind of like a way to make us feel better about not having, not being able to get the other testing done. And then also because they wanted to see the, the placenta and everything. So on that ultrasound, um, the baby measured on track. So I think I was like 13, 13 weeks, 13 or something, maybe almost 14 weeks at that time. Um, so the baby looked good. Everything was on track. We saw fingers and toes and arms and legs and everything. Um, the neck thing that they were measuring, they said that that looked okay. So that wasn't, they weren't anticipating that the baby was going to, um, have a high risk of having one of the things that they were checking for. And then they said that, um, the only other thing that they could do, uh, as far as like testing or anything goes would be, um, like a blood draw at 16 weeks, which is actually my appointments tomorrow. So, um, like 16 to 17 weeks, I can have a blood draw. So I'm doing that tomorrow. And then my anatomy scan, like the full anatomy scan, like around 20 weeks. So that's what we're planning on doing. They said that because of the placenta issue, um, with the cyst that I will have to have future ultrasounds to monitor, like monitor that. So pretty regularly, it looks like I'm going to be going in for them to check on, the status of it to see if it stayed the same size, if it's shrunk, if it's grown, um, because that, that's going to determine like if it changes, like that could tell us like possible, like, you know, if it's higher risk of having one of those things that I mentioned earlier. Um, so it's been a lot, like I said, it's been a lot. It's been, obviously it was Christmas. And so we kind of spent the last couple weeks as a family, just kind of like, processing all this information because it took like about two weeks for all these reports and, you know, doctors to call me and everything. So we, like, there was a lot of time where we really didn't know what was going on and I didn't want to make a video without having like all the information. Like, if that makes sense, I didn't want, like, I just felt like I just wanted to wait to know for sure what was going on. Um, and that's why I'm making it down now. And I could have made it like the week of Christmas and we, I talked to Jeff about it and we decided that we didn't want to because we didn't want to make a video that, you know, it's like such, you know, it's like bad news and like, there's just a lot going on that way. I didn't want to, I didn't want to upload that like the week of Christmas. And so we, we didn't. Um, and then after Christmas, cause I'm filming this now, it's like the second of January or something. Um, after Christmas, we didn't flip, we didn't film anything for like a week. Like we took the whole week, like pretty much off. Um, the last vlog we put up was like our Christmas morning vlog and we just really needed that break, um, to just kind of like process everything. And even now, like this is really hard for me, um, to talk about. And I feel like if I had tried if I had tried to talk about it a couple weeks ago, I don't even think I would be able to. I don't, I don't even think I would have been able to not be like a huge crying mess and be able to sit to even like talk about all of it. If that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the update. That's what's going on. So right now I am 
almost 17 weeks pregnant. Um, and one of the babies is healthy as of right now and doing okay. And the other baby is not. And I'm carrying, I'm still carrying that baby. And I likely will be carrying that baby until I deliver. It's, it's just like a lot to, it's a lot to process. So <sighs> Jeff and I talked about if we want to get genetic testing done afterwards, um, to see what was going on with baby B, like the, like the could tell us the gender could tell us like what was, if something was wrong with it, what was wrong with it. Um, and we're still trying to decide if that's something that we really want to do or if it, if we feel like it will just make it worse. Um, I don't feel like the loss of a baby is ever, it's ever easy. Um, but like I said, like, it's so weird for us right now because like, it's not like I've had a miscarriage before and it's like, I almost feel like I can't fully grieve the loss of this baby because I'm so concerned about the health of the other baby at this point. And I, it's not, I know it's not going to make, it's not going to make sense to like a lot of people. And I get it. Like, it doesn't even make sense to me. Like Jeff and I are both just like really upset. We're just really upset. We don't know how to feel. And we're trying to be, have it, have it together as possible for our kids. Because obviously like we don't want to make it we don't want to make it something that like makes them more upset than they already are. Um, and that's another reason why, like I said, we didn't talk about this, like over the holidays, we just wanted, we just wanted to have like a normal holiday as a family, like a normal Christmas. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what's up. That's what's going on right now. And I do have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, um, for my, they're going to check in. I'm not sure if they're doing an ultrasound or not. I wouldn't be surprised if they did just to kind of check on the status of things. Um, I have to get blood work done. They want to do that blood work draw where they will be able to check for like some sort of, some sort of like genetic stuff. Like I'm not exactly sure what it, what it covers. Um, so we may make an update after my appointment tomorrow and just kind of let you guys know if anything's changed, but this is the information that we've had or that we've gotten over the last couple weeks. So, and I didn't want, I didn't want to like keep, cause I posted some stuff on Instagram and like we're in, you know, we, the other vlogs and stuff we've made, like I didn't want to not make this video and then just have people wonder like what was going on, but also at the same time, like this is just such a hard thing to talk about that like, that's why it's been a couple weeks is because like we needed that time to process everything. And like, honestly, we're still processing it. So thank you for all your like kind wishes and like messages and stuff like checking in. Like I saw like a bunch of people on Instagram had like sent me really sweet messages. Um, and emails, we've even gotten some emails from you guys and stuff. So thank you guys for checking in and caring. <sighs> it's just going to take some time for us to like adjust to this. And we're obviously very excited about, um, about the baby that is doing okay. And we hope that that baby continues to do okay. Um, but if something changes, uh, we will definitely be letting you guys know. So I'm not even sure how to end this video. I guess if you watch this whole thing, thank you for watching. I don't even know how long it is. Um, that's it, I guess. I will see you guys next time. Bye.